say, go f**k yourself. So you're gonna come and heckle, at least prepare. Don't get so pissed you can't think. How embarrassed your husband is right now. He's, he doesn't even want to be white anymore. Comedians are just here to make people laugh, but sometimes the people get offended by their harmless jokes. Today, we're going to watch as those hecklers get taken down by the very comedians they tried to disrupt. In this clip, we've got a table of self-absorbed hecklers who can't stay off their phones long enough to enjoy a live show. It's always a certain type, clueless, loud, and too busy thinking they're the center of attention. Got a guy wearing a boys extra small t-shirt here, very good, that just goes in. I'm guessing this was the table that Jeremiah had to yell at, that's my big fucking guess. You can always tell when one audience member is turned the opposite way of the show. It's always a telltale sign that it might be a table of dumb bitches, you know what I'm saying? Whoa! myself once when I said that. Just stayed right in the phone. Wait, what did he say exactly again? He called you a dumb bitch, Samantha. Don't look at him. You with these girls too? Are these the wise women back here that know, shut the fuck up and re respect the artist? This fucking dummy still has her Snapchat wide open right now. Let, let your battery rest, sweetheart. Put it out, put the blanket out. There you go. No one gives a fuck about you. I'm talking to the brunette, not you two-tone blonde. I don't care what you're getting married to. I'm talking to the best friend brunette that's having the time of her life thinking we're just making fun of you. Oh no, I'm making fun of her. I don't attack the bride. I go for that fucking best girl right there. The always the fucking, always second. Never gonna get a ring on that finger. Oh, you do? Oh, I couldn't tell. I can't see Cracker Jack rings from this distance. I didn't see. Yeah. That dude must have mowed a lot of lawns to get a ring like that. Shaking this shit up tonight, I don't give a fuck. This heckler got called out for exactly what she is, a distraction, not just to the comedian, but to everyone else trying to enjoy the show. When you come to a comedy club and act like you're too good for the room, don't be surprised when the comedian knocks you down a peg. Maybe next time, they'll leave the phone at home and learn to listen. In this clip, we see a heckler who doesn't know when to shut up trying to make the show about him. The guy's loud, disruptive, and clearly thinks he's funnier than he actually is. It's a classic case of someone needing attention and failing miserably. It's been a great start. Yeah, if the, if the idea with heckling is to try and be funnier than the person on stage, at the moment I, I, I've set the bar very low so far. And, uh, so if, if you've got something, if you've got something funny to say, join in. If you haven't got anything funny to say, I had to tell you the date earlier on, mate, as you were writing in your book. You didn't know what day it was, so I think it's unlikely you're going to be that funny. That's just that's just my guess. But if you are going to heckle. Try and wait for there to be a gap where I'm not speaking so people can hear what you're saying. So the thing is, I've got a microphone here, don't even spot it. Whereas people can't hear you. because So you're going to come and heckle, at least prepare. Don't get so pissed you can't think. And that's the first rule of heckling. Second rule of heckling, maybe bring your own amplification system at some point. But you are quite loud. So, um... I said, I know it hasn't gone very well tonight. Remember the rule about not speaking when the microphone's on because they can't hear you. Try and wait for a gap. There was one, you missed it. <laughs> there was another one, again, you had a very big, I left a big gap. No, still nothing. I'll count you down to the gap, see if you can get into this time. Three, two, one. No, nothing. So, um, I said, come on, I know it hasn't gone very well tonight, but give me another chance. Let me take you out for dinner. She said, you take me out for dinner. No. <laughs> I wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. Bollocks! I said, uh, <laughs> It's not where piss comes from, mate. So, uh, it might, it might seem like it. She said, uh, it's going to be very difficult to get through this. I mean, we can just, we can turn it into just being about you. That's obviously what you want. If you want to be made to look smaller than you look already, we can take the whole evening doing that. But it's just, with jokes, the thing is, if you have a, I don't know if you ever try to tell a joke. If you, if you tell a joke and a bloke goes shouts out bollocks in between the feed line and the punch line, probably not going to work. Well, I can tell a joke. You can tell a joke. Go on, tell us a joke then. Oh, all right then. This bloke goes to work on a farm, right? Yeah. And the bloke says, right, um... Bollocks! <laughs> bollocks! <laughs> bollocks! What are you saying? Bollocks! Yeah, bollocks! Bollocks! Oh, I haven't... He's saying I haven't heard it. That's weird, isn't it? But... 
when I was telling a joke, it was alright for you to shout bollocks in the middle of my joke. Strange how it spoiled the joke, wasn't it? But I think with your joke, probably improved it. Summer, so, say we missed that one. I've got loads of good jokes. Yeah. yeah. I think maybe it's... I think maybe... Maybe it's time... Maybe it's time... Maybe it's time you went home. Got into bed. Yeah, so you went home, got into your car, sat in the garage, got a pipe connected to the tailpipe. Put it in... I'm not really joking here, honestly. You're, you're a small, sad man. It's time... It's time for you to go. Yeah, have you been through a lot? I'm a bus driver, okay. I've been through a lot better than you, I'm a bus driver. With it, in situations like this, I don't know if you've ever seen the film Murder on the Orient Express, but I can't think... When you get a really annoying heckler who kind of wrecks a gig, essentially, you're quite good. I mean, there's a certain number of people in the room. If we all just stabbed him, right? And we all agreed just to say a man crept into the... A madman came to a gig, he stabbed him 120 times. Don't joke about murder on the Old don't Express. Stab it. Mate, People calm down, get mate. stabbed every day, all right? Yeah. He went stabbed don't. every the day. The thing is, I'm a comedian. I can joke, so, I sort of joke about all sorts of things, really, that, that people do every day. Well, it ain't. Oh, is it? Kids are getting stabbed left, right, and centre, all right? It's a thing. I got fucking mugs, right? I yeah. got fucking mugs. What a shame he didn't do a bit of a better job. Stabbing is no fucking joke, right? No. Hecklers like this are pathetic. No talent, no timing, and no self-awareness. They're just looking for a moment in the spotlight, and all they get is embarrassment. The sad part? This kind of attention-seeking nonsense ruins everyone's night. If you can't handle watching a show without yelling out garbage, stay home where you belong. Anyone here smoke weed? Fuck yeah. No! Talking about buying weed right now? <laughs> oh, speaking of weed, we ought to like do something about this. I maybe you had something for it. Do I have something for you? I'm, I have. So no, not me. You never answered. Okay, girl. That wasn't me. That was somebody else, you drunk motherfucker. That was a totally different person. It's always the same with these people. They throw out some random topic, make everything awkward, and act like they're doing a public service. If you're so desperate for attention, go blog about it in some liberal echo chamber where they actually care what you think. This is comedy, not group therapy. In this clip, we've got a heckler who clearly thought he'd be the star of the show, but instead, he's about to get roasted into oblivion. This guy, sitting there with his weird glove on, decides it's his moment to shine, but instead of adding anything clever, he gives the comedian all the ammo he needs to completely tear him apart. Uh, I'm trying to, uh... You know, do less drugs, I'm trying to watch less porn, that's one of my goals. Thank you, you got a pro not watching porn? Uh, what's that? You love porn, all right? What kind, what's the last movie you beat off to? A picture of your girlfriend, all right. What a liar. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Why the fuck is leather gloves on, you fucking movie king? You're OJ? Oh, and but, not, but you only beat off to your girlfriend. Which one is it? Do you want to kill her or do you want to beat off to her? Yeah. Man, were you safe? Psychopath, I hear your question, but there's a, you're up to no good, and I don't want to fucking. I can't support a man. It's hot in here, by the way, motherfucker. There's no way. Your shits are gonna be clammy as hell, dude. Uh, they're always clammy. Go to a dermatologist, bro. What the fuck? Don't hide. Don't hide who you are. Get your little moist, fucked up hands. Like, 
get medical attention. Don't. You think the solution to having uh, clammy hands is wearing leather gloves in your life? You think that's a less conspicuous way to live your life? <laughs> I'm all I'm the one who's all over the place. Not the asshole in the flannel and the fucking leather glove. Who loves porn but beats off the pictures of his girlfriend. That heckler walked in thinking he could steal the spotlight, but all he got was a public humiliation he won't forget. He came in trying to be slick with his ridiculous glove, but left with the audience laughing at him, not with him. Sometimes people need to learn that if you can't handle the heat, stay out of the comedy club. Daddy long legs is not harmless to human beings because no animal is harmless if he makes you call him daddy. And that is... Yeah? It's like, ah, oh, yeah, look at daddy's long legs. <laughs> Who just screamed that? Okay, so before I go on, I do want to say that there's confusion here where you think the night's about you, and I'm positive it's about me. So, I know, okay? So here's the thing, I know you're having fun, I know you're having fun, but maybe like, just keep it down a little bit, all right? Is that okay? And then afterwards we'll have, we'll have a great time, it'll be awesome. Is that cool? Just, just for the next however long, um, is that cool? Thank you so much, you're the best. This heckler thought their random outburst would add something to the night, but all they did was make themselves look ridiculous. The comedian handled it like a pro, gently putting them in their place without breaking the flow of the show. Sometimes people need to realize that the audience came for comedy, not their unsolicited commentary. In this clip, a heckler decides to chime in with something so random it derails the flow for a moment. It's always fascinating to see how a crowd reacts when someone thinks they've got something clever to add, but the real fun is watching how the comedian handles it. Let's just say, not everyone is cut out for the spotlight. I, I was staying in a hotel the other day and I called down and asked for the internet access code. And the guy goes, okay, what do you want the code for the internet? You need the code? You want the code? I'm like, yeah, what's the, the internet access code? He goes, okay, you got a pain to write it down? Goes, is A as in apple? B as in boy? Y as in jello? <laughs> Jello? Why is it Jello? Holy shit. There is a lot of mysterious shit in Jello, but there is definitely no why in it. Don't go what? Don't go to Utah? Don't go to Utah for Jello. I gotta say, I do have a few rules that I live by, and that's not one of them yet, but it's, uh, I'm gonna definitely add that to my notebook of helpful hints. Don't go to Utah for Jello. Why, why is that? Yeah, maybe I haven't read the paper lately. Is there some sort of crazy Utah jello crisis? I gotta get the fuck out of here, but you picked an interesting time to pique my curiosity. Don't, don't, don't go to Utah for jello. Is that a piece of advice you feel necessary to give people pretty regularly? Or, because for the most part, I think it doesn't come up. You live in Utah and you're like, you don't want people going there for the jello. Is this some kind of trick to keep people out from eating up all your jello, like the whole Iceland Greenland scam? What a fucking weird thing to say. Don't go to Utah for jello. You know what? You just ruined my whole summer vacation plans. Here I had rented the trailer, got myself a special spoon. Nice bib. I was all set to make the trip down there. So it turns, wait a minute, let me get this straight. Turns out the stereotype is not true. Utah is not the best place to go for cello. I don't understand anymore. What? Your fourth wife makes good jello. Well, now you're mixing a little polygamy in, which makes a little sense. The jello thing came out of the fucking blue. Don't go to Utah for jello. Hey, here's, I'm gonna give you a little piece of advice just so it's not so one-sided. Don't go to Ohio for motor oil. The heckler tried to derail the show with a bizarre statement, but instead of falling flat, it gave the comedian a chance to mock the absurdity of it all. When people throw random nonsense like this, they probably think they're being clever. But as usual, the comic skillfully flips it back, turning the heckler into the punchline. In this clip, we've got a heckler who actually isn't half bad. Instead of the usual drunk slurring or pointless interruptions, she makes a harmless comment about the comedian's appearance. Of course, it still doesn't go unnoticed, and the comedian runs with it, twisting her words in a way only a pro can. Be mom's mate, she's chatting away. Um, do you want to know why he's square in the film? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, in your pockets. Oh, I thought you meant. <laughs> Jesus, I was like, I'm a boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 
Oh, that, yeah, that's lip balm. That's actually lip balm. I've never got that out on stage before. The illusion has gone. I thought I got this guy's hand. Yeah. SPF factor 15 as well. I'm taking no fucking chance. Um, can we just keep them to my pockets? It's like shit magic. <laughs> 15 peach. <laughs> uh, that's it, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Oh, that's been great, take it easy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is fucking weird, isn't it? This time, the heckler didn't bomb completely. She just handed the comedian an opportunity on a silver platter. It's rare when someone from the crowd doesn't completely derail things, but it just goes to show that even a half decent heckler in their place. In this clip, a heckler tries to interject with a mix of confusion and noise, attempting to grab attention like a toddler throwing a tantrum. Instead of playing nice, the comedian pushes back hard, calling out the heckler for their disrespectful behavior. It's a perfect example of how some people think they can just disrupt a show without consequence. Oh man, this is fun. This is fun. What? This, this bitch. I don't know. She was speaking Spanish and English. <laughs> What'd you say, Selena? <laughs> she, she <laughs> yeah, I know about that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody get her empanada. No, you fucked up. strong stance against the heckler was refreshing. He made it clear that a live show isn't a free-for-all. The audience came to enjoy a performance, not to listen to some clown with an inflated sense of importance. It's vital to call out hecklers like this. They believe they're funny, but they only end up making fools of themselves. Oh my God, who fucking invited the cop? Gonna <laughs> hand me all your weed, otherwise I'll rack. Fuck it up. <laughs> What's up, Punchline? How's the parents? Any parents here tonight? Yeah, Wednesday night, you're like, fuck your kids, hell yeah! They're waiting in the car, I swear to you do your homework? Did you do it? 
Okay, I got a test. Turn on this car. Okay, drive means drunk, because that's what daddy is right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, daddy. <laughs> Let's, you don't have. You don't have... <laughs> Did you hear that? No one laughs, so shut the fuck up. He <laughs> ain't gonna get pussy with that shit, Joe. <laughs> Check. Nobody does, I can't. Who's gonna fuck me tonight? Nobody. <laughs> the comedian did well to shut down the heckler, reminding everyone that a live performance isn't a playground for loudmouths. It's about the act on stage, not some random voice from the crowd. Hecklers often think they're being funny, but they only disrupt the flow and make themselves look ridiculous. The world has enough chaos without adding wannabe comedians who don't know when to keep quiet. In this clip, a heckler chimes in trying to stir the pot in what should be a lighthearted moment. Instead of adding to the fun, they come off as desperate for attention, mistaking rudeness for wit. This kind of behavior shows a real lack of understanding about comedy. Is that a fucking poem you just wrote? <laughs> Fucking fuck you, not a haiku. It's a fuck you, fuck you. Now I'm getting fucked up. Shh. All right. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be all right. There's nothing but love in this room right now. Is that cool? I really appreciate that validation from you. I was really worried for a while. Is the fucking fat retard in the front row enjoying the show? God, I hope so. Please, Lord in heaven, make sure fucking Pluto is having a good time. Alright, come on, sit down. Come on, Animal House. I if you just can relax, I won't antagonize you. I won't antagonize you. I don't want this to get ugly. No, no, it's all, it's all, it's all out of love and affection. My only goal is for people to have fun. I did a show once at the Morty's Comedy Joint in Baghdad. That was a rough crowd. The comedian addresses the heckler with a mix of sarcasm and humor, showing that he won't be thrown off by such childish antics. It's important to call out these disruptions. Comedy should be a space where everyone can enjoy themselves without the fear of some clown shouting nonsense from the crowd. If you want to laugh, sit back and enjoy the show instead of trying to derail it. The world has enough chaos. Let's keep comedy as a break from all that. In this clip, a heckler throws out a reference to Garth Brooks, but it lands flat. Instead of adding to the atmosphere, this guy thinks he's clever, but just comes off as confused. It's a prime example of how some people just don't get the flow of a comedy show. They mistake noise for wit and create a distraction instead of contributing. Wow, look at that sea seahorse on land. Did, did, did you say Garth Brooks? Is that what he said? I'm from the Midwest and no, no, I don't get that shit. What, is, what does that mean? Sir? <laughs> Are you in a race to alcoholism with that lady? What is going on? I said, I'm like a seahorse on, on, on land, and this guy thought that th 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 is a good time to be like Garth Brooks. He is just like the seahorse on land. It's Garth Brooks. That's right. I've got friends in low places, and, 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 and those places are the ocean. I'm sorry, sir. So did you did you say Garth Brooks? Oh, Garth Brooks. Oh, you're doing like like wordplay on a country singer that I am not. All right, we'll go with it. Garth Brooks. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, holding on to my hat next time. It's clear that the heckler is lost in his own world. Comedy thrives on connection and understanding. If you can't keep up, maybe it's best to stay quiet and let the professionals do their thing. Let's save the random references for karaoke night and keep the laughs flowing. Oh man, this guy's... Yeah? He loves the Bruins. He loves the Bruins. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Is he from... Is he a time traveler from a month in the past? <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about? The hockey season is over. 
That wasn't even a good thing to yell two weeks ago. <laughs> this is how simple guys are. You think girls, she's already thinking about the talk you're gonna have later about your comments. <laughs> about coming fake and also not wanting to live together. <laughs> and that guy's brain is operating at, you know what, I love the Bruins! <laughs> Comedian handles the situation well, poking fun at the heckler's misguided attempt to be part of the show. It's a reminder that not everyone understands the art of comedy. If you're going to jump into the spotlight, at least know what's going on. Heckling should enhance the performance, not turn it into a circus act. That's why I work so hard, man. I grind nonstop. I'm performing every night, multiple times a night, all the time. I'm on the road nonstop. I don't even see my daughter most of the time. We fucking FaceTime, and she don't even look at me. She's fucking watching Moana the whole goddamn time. I don't even know if I'm a real dad. Dwayne Johnson's her dad right now. He's taking care of her. Huh? I'm white. Yeah. You thought in your head this was the right time to stop the show and yell that I'm white? And then you said, so am I, and you wonder why I fucking hate white people. Look how embarrassed your husband is right now. He's, he doesn't even want to be white anymore. He's so fucking... He's your ex-husband. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I wonder why. She said, you're white. And then I said, all right. And then she went, me too. And I said, yep. And then she went. Like this was a fucking meeting. Don't include me in your bullshit. The comedian's reaction to the heckler shows how important it is to read the room. The heckler's attempt to inject himself into the narrative not only fell flat, but also exposed his ignorance. Comedy is about connection, not disruption. If you want to shout out, at least make it worthwhile. Otherwise, you're just proving that some folks don't know when to keep their mouths shut. In this clip, a heckler disrupts the comedian as he tries to debut new material. This guy clearly thinks he's part of the show, shouting out while sporting shorts and sunglasses indoors. It's a classic case of someone believing their opinion matters more than the performance performance on stage. Instead of letting the comedian speak, he decides to draw attention to himself, completely ignoring the atmosphere of the room. That's, by the way, I don't know if the sound is too hot. There's a... It's feedback. Cool. That's it. So, you have nothing to do with this, sir. Um, now, the material I'm doing tonight is uh, new stuff for this tour, uh, some of which I've never done anywhere before. Uh, so, yeah. What? Bring it up. Okay. I'm going to request you guys don't yell stuff out, even if it's supportive. It's fucking weird. We're not here for a practice. You can leave then. You're not here for a practice. You, you, you don't know how stand-up works, sir. Sometimes you do new stuff, and it's not practice as much as it's a debut. Um, are you wearing sunglasses indoors? And you have shorts on and your feet on other people's seats. Yes. Okay, you're gonna get thrown out in about 20 minutes. Cool. I know how this works, and you're not going to get better as the show goes on. So, uh, that said, there are no more warnings. If you yell out again, you're going to be thrown out. I'm not gonna kick you out, you're gonna kick you out. You understand this, right? Okay? So you stop me. Your date is clapping. I'm sure I'm not the only person to tell you no. Anyway. So, what's happening right now? Oh. transgender people, and that conservatives should tip better. And he was like, I have heard enough. And let me just say, the guy who was not blind, wearing sunglasses indoors at night, in shorts, with his feet up on other people's seats, yelling at me, what are the odds? 
odds that he's also Republican. <laughs> Who knew? Uh, I hope you enjoy your dinner at Shooter's. <laughs> Comedian's response highlights a key truth. Some people just don't know when to keep quiet. This heckler with his obnoxious interruptions seems to have no respect for the craft. It's frustrating to see someone derail a show like that, especially when the comedian is trying to share something new. If you can't appreciate the effort, then maybe stay home. In this clip, a heckler named Clint makes the mistake of thinking he can chat it up with the comedian. He doesn't just disrupt, he drags down the whole vibe, oblivious to the fact that he's not part of the act. Instead of enjoying the show, he decides to inject his commentary showing he can't tell the difference between a performance and a conversation. So I was fucking this guy called Clint. And, uh, <laughs> barely touching the sides, if I'm honest. Uh, smell of disappointment and his stepfather. And, uh, I am on the Royal Variety Show this year. I, uh, but, pardon? You've mistaken, you've mistaken this for a conversation, my friend. <laughs> you can heckle me, but I've got a microphone and I haven't got shit for brains. I'm going to win. Um, <laughs> haven't got time to train to be your carer. I understand you've finished your colouring in, you've got restless. You fuck someone once, they follow you, ladies and gentlemen, it's a mistake. I am... Um... <laughs> if he wasn't here, he'd be licking railings. So, I, uh... It's the name of his mum. What? I, um... Uh... 